When was the last time you used the toilet? Did you think about where your waste goes and what the fate of your urine and feces is? Well, most of us don't. We just flush and forget. However, there are several reasons why we should value our waste and why we should rethink our current wastewater treatment systems. One of these reasons is that urine and feces can make excellent fertilizers because of the nutrients they contain. Today, I will introduce various ways in which nutrients can be recovered from human waste. I will also provide insights on the benefits and challenges of reusing our human waste in agriculture as a fertilizer and how important it is to choose appropriate recovery solutions. So what's the problem? Well, currently 118 million tons of nitrogen fertilizer and 46 million tons of phosphate fertilizer are produced worldwide every year. The reason these large amounts are produced is partially to compensate for nutrient losses that occur further down the line in our wastewater chain. So what happens is that fertilizers are used to grow crops meaning that the plants take up the nutrients, and these then end up on our plate. However, the nutrients we consume as food, we later excrete. The majority of these nutrients then either end up in our oceans or are lost to the air. To avoid these losses and help restore the nutrient cycle, the alternative is to recover these nutrients from our wastewater and reuse them as fertilizers in agriculture. The nutrients most abundant in our wastewater are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the same three macronutrients that are essential for plant growth. Urine and feces are the main contributors of these nutrients to our wastewater, namely 82% of nitrogen, 68% of phosphorus, and 78% of potassium found in our household wastewater comes from our urine and feces. The average person produces around half a kilo of phosphorus each year. That amount is enough to fertilize a 200 meter squared agricultural field. However, reusing human waste as a fertilizer is not simple, and there are several factors that need to be taken into account. First, it is important to consider the nutrient content, concentration, and availability, as well as the pH and solubility of the products recovered from wastewater. These factors not only determine how much fertilizer is applied to the plant, but also whether the nutrients are chemically available to plants for uptake. For example, nutrients in compost need to be converted into different ionic forms by microorganisms before they become available to plants. On the contrary, urine has such a high concentration of available nutrients that over-application can result in plant death this is why products that we recover from human waste need to be of the right quantity and quality. Second, urine and feces also contain most of the micropollutants found in domestic wastewater. Pathogens, pharmaceuticals, hormones, and heavy metals are examples of these contaminants. Urine contains most of the pharmaceuticals and hormones, while feces contains most of the pathogens and heavy metals. For this reason, direct reuse of wastewater without treatment is discouraged and even illegal in many countries. Before wastewater is reused, it is essential to consider the risks associated with these contaminants and remove them accordingly. Several low-tech and high-tech technologies have been developed to both treat wastewater and recover nutrient-rich products from it. Resources can be recovered at existing wastewater treatment plants, where toilet wastewater is mixed with other waste streams, like shower, sink, and rainwater. Or they can be recovered from separate streams. This could entail separating out toilet wastewater from the rest of the wastewater stream, or even separating out urine and feces and treating these streams individually. Separating waste streams prevents dilution and contamination and makes nutrient recovery more effective. That said, there are several nutrient-rich products that can be recovered from these streams. For example, struvite, a phosphate mineral, can be extracted from urine. It can be used as a slow-release phosphorus-rich fertilizer, meaning that it gradually supplies nutrients to plants. Another example is compost, which can be produced from source-separated feces. Compost is basically decomposed organic matter, which makes it an excellent fertilizer and soil amendment. 
Again, it is important to evaluate the quality of each recovered product for plant, human, and environmental health before reuse. Finally, choosing appropriate recovery technologies depends on the context in which they are placed. While factors such as wastewater composition, weather, infrastructure, and budget do influence the selection of technologies, it also depends on the interest of the stakeholders involved. For instance, Stakeholders from water authorities may be interested in reducing treatment costs and making profit off of the recovered products, while stakeholders in agriculture may demand a fertilizer that has a guaranteed quality and contains nutrients that are quickly available to plants. Meanwhile, citizens also need to be on board. They may support nutrient recovery, but may be unwilling to give up certain ideals of sanitary comfort, for instance, using toilets that separate urine and feces and others may squirm at the idea of eating food fertilized with nutrients sourced from human waste. How would you feel about reusing your waste to grow crops? Do you think it's important to close the nutrient cycle? With this, I hope you've learned about the benefits and challenges of reusing urine and feces in agriculture, and that to make it a success requires cooperation across various stakeholders along the sanitation and agriculture chain, including citizens. <laughs>